Hey everyone, my name is Natalie Myers, as Bobby said. I'm just going to um, get ready to share my screen with you and then we'll start with the presentation. So give me one moment. All righty, so I'm hoping everyone can see that. Let me just make it into the presentation view and we'll get started. Okay, um, so I'm here to talk to you guys today about the agency that I work for, Opportunities for Ohioans with Disabilities. Um, and I'm going to be referring to our agency as OOD throughout the presentation. Um, and I'll introduce a couple more acronyms for you all. Um, but as I said, and as Bobby said, my name is Natalie Myers. My contact information will be shared with you all towards the end of the presentation. I'm a vocational rehabilitation supervisor with OOD. I currently work in the Cleveland office. Um, and as our my, as my presentation will um, continue on today, um, we'll talk about the vocational rehabilitation process and what to expect, how to apply, and how it does um, apply to our individuals who are we are working with, um, our youth with disabilities. Um, we do have counselors serving individuals with disabilities throughout all 88 Ohio counties. Um, so if you do have another coworker working in a different county um, or have a family member or a friend that um, as, our, as this presentation continues, you find um, may benefit from our services, there is a counselor out there to work with them. Um, so again, if you have any questions, I'll address those at the end and my contact information will be at the end. So I will talk about the VR process as I see it, but I will say that um, every individual who does apply and become eligible for our services, they are able to apply to the form of our vocational rehabilitation counselors, um, or what we refer to as a VRC. Um, they maintain general and specialized caseloads. So as it applies to our presentation today. We do have counselors who work solely with transition age youth, um, as I will uh, get to um, in a few moments here and what we consider transition age youth. We also have counselors that work with a mix of transition age youth and adults. Um, our counselors work with individuals with all different types of disabilities. Um, and they do work well with other agencies who are working um, alongside our individuals. So as you see here, our VRCs coordinate goals and objectives to align with other plans and other agencies. So what we know as the individualized education plan through the school, we have our counselors work with um, other individuals who are working with our individuals um, so that we can align with goals, align our goals with our students. Um, the ISP would be through a county board um, or the individualized service plan and then our IPE that we have at OOD um, I'll further explain in a little bit but again this is just a plan where we write goals and the services needed to reach those goals um, for our individuals with disabilities. We do coordinate services throughout the entire life of a case and so um, most oftentimes our counselors who are working with transition age youth will have a case open for for several years, um, as I'll explain here in a little bit. Uh, but they will, our VRCs will coordinate services, um, make referrals and authorize for services as needed. So how OOD defines a transition age student or a student with a disability, SWD, anyone who has a diagnosed disability can apply for our services at the age of 14. Um, and again, we would consider a student with a disability um, anywhere from a student who is 14 years old, who is not yet 22, because we know that students can stay in school until their 22nd birthday. We also consider a student with a disability um, someone who is still in not only high school, but also attending a post-secondary um, education track um, and we do, as I had indicated earlier, um, anyone who applies for our services would be made eligible as long as they have some type of documented disability. And so again, that can be a wide array of disabilities, learning, behavior, mental health, mobility, um, hearing and vision, just to mention a few. 
Um, there are some evidence-based predictors for post-school employment. So our, um, our goal is to have individuals attending our services or um, obtaining our services get work, right? That is our final goal. And so I'm here to talk to you today just about how that applies to transition age students. But we want parents and guardians or their caretakers, um, we want them to be um, there for the students um, and we will coordinate care with those individuals. Um, we offer two or more, and I will get to this, we offer two or more authentic paid work experiences while the individual is in, is in school. And oftentimes this is one of the first paid work experience or just any work experience that our students have to um, have. Um, and we know that through our services, through OOD or vocational rehabilitation services, students who have a job at school exit are five times more likely to be engaged in employment and education. So post-secondary education is for everyone, um, but they are five times more likely to be engaged in post-secondary employment. Um, so move on here. So our goal for individuals with disabilities, our students with disabilities, um, we want them to have a smooth transition. And so we know that they are working with other entities, whether that be a mental health agency or a developmental disability agency. Um, but what we want to do is work with all the agencies or entities that our individuals are working with um, to plan for vocational training, any post-secondary training that might be applicable to that individual. Um, any independent living skills. So while we at OOD can't necessarily pay rent for someone or buy someone a car, um, we can help to coordinate those types of things with other entities that they could be working with, um, with our goal of competitive integrated employment. And so the individuals that apply for our services, adults and students alike, we realize that they have some type of barrier or impediment to employment, um, which is why they're coming to our agency. And so our goal, as I said, is competitive integrated employment. We want someone with a disability working right alongside someone that does not have a disability. Um, we certainly can coordinate any accommodations, reasonable accommodations that are necessary um, throughout you know, the course of someone's um, job search. And then obviously once they obtain a job, we can help with that as well. Are you gonna talk? Sorry yeah. to interrupt, you're doing a great job. Um, we're having mic issues. Um, it's going in and out every now and then. Um, I don't know if it's when you're like moving away from the computer or do okay. you have a cell phone or anything near? Do I have a what? Like a cell phone or any other electronic device nearby. It might be um, just the bandwidth. Yeah, I can toss my cell phone. <laughs> yeah, hang on. Thank okay. you. Yeah, yeah, let me know if that happens again, okay? Okay, thank you. Go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, you're fine. So um, in the next few slides, I am going to talk about the vocational rehabilitation process and what that looks like for someone that wants to apply for our services, um, what that looks like for their eligibility for our services. Once they are eligible for OOD, um, I'll talk about the services that are likely to be offered to a student with a disability and then what closure, a case closure looks like. Okay, so the application process, we have a standard application um, that you would see, you know, if you're applying for a job, um, it, it mirrors very much a, a job application. We have name, address, social security number. Um, we do ask for their type of disability. Um, and if they don't know that, that's okay. We can work through that process with them. Um, some people don't know a name of what they have an impairment or, or, or so on and so forth. Um, but if we have an individual who are, who are applying for themselves, that's totally fine. We have a lot of individuals, students with disabilities, actually the referrals and the applications come from either a parent or a school, um, the transition coordinator and intervention specialist. We see a lot of applications come through from those individuals. Um, we also see a fair amount of applications come from case managers with local county boards of DD and mental health, um, fair amount from county children's services, and then mental health agencies where an individual is currently receiving services. Um, 
pretty much across the board, it's a good fair amount um, of where these, these applications are coming from. But as far as transition age students are concerned, I see a lot of applications coming from schools. Um, and so towards the end of the presentation, I can show you guys a little bit more about where to obtain our application. And if you want to contact me, I'm certainly more than happy to forward you our application. But this is our website down here. Um, it's simple, ood.ohio.gov. Um, and you can navigate to um, a section where we have transition specific information um, to learn a little bit more about transition aged youth and what we can provide. Um, and then that's where you would find the application as well. So when to apply, um, as I stated earlier, a student with a disability, we consider age 14 to not yet 22 or up to their 22nd birthday. So anyone can apply as long as they are 14 years of age. So sometimes we have um, individuals who are 14 who are in eighth grade, that's okay. They just have to be 14. We don't necessarily look at the grade. Um, we have to determine that there is a vocational need. So they want to work in some capacity. Maybe they don't know exactly what a job entails. They just know that they have to go somewhere, do some things during the day, and then they come home with a paycheck. Um, we can help educate them exactly on what is a job. What does it take to get a job? What does it take to maintain a job? That's kind of where we come in and our vocational counselors come in. Um, we like to see individuals apply for services before the vocational need becomes urgent. So that's important because we have a process. We have the application process, which turns into filling out some paperwork, meeting with a vocational counselor so that that counselor can do an initial interview and get to know the student or the individual a little bit better, um, which then continues on to eligibility. And anywhere from a month to two months, you can expect that that would kind of take before a counselor is ready to meet with someone to kind of get their vocational process started as far as services are concerned. We want students who want to get a work experience um, and we'd like to have students apply for services and become engaged in services no later than two years before exiting school. So at least during their junior year, um, but that certainly doesn't preclude a senior from applying for our services um, if, if the, the need is there. So I'm going to move on to eligibility criteria. So we do want to ensure that an individual has some type of documented disability. And so our vocational counselors will um, request medical records, psychiatric records, school records, whatever records are applicable to that student at hand um, so that they can verify that there is some type of documented disability um, made by, by a clinician. We also, during the eligibility process, want to ensure that an um, applicant or a student does have some type of impairment that would result in a substantial impediment to employment. We also want to ensure that they can benefit from our services and that the individual would require services to either prepare for, secure, or get some type of employment. Once eligibility is uh, verified, <clears throat> we do move on to the individualized plan for employment process. Um, so earlier in my presentation, I did indicate that we do have kind of like a plan here at OOD that we write for every individual. Um, this plan is written not only by the vocational rehabilitation counselor, but also in collaboration with the student um, and any other individual that they work with. So if they're very close to their parents, they have a case manager, a mental health case manager, they have a county board case manager, anyone that would like to be involved in as long as it's okay with the student and the guardian, um, that's fine. But this is where we talk about services that would be needed to help an individual get a job. Um, maintain that job. We talk about costs that are needed, in which case OOD does provide most of the costs for things, but if work clothing or maybe a bus pass is needed, um, we talk about the need for that and whether or not an individual or a family can contribute to that cost. Um, <laughs> and we want the individual to be there along the way as, as we are planning for, for their services um, on the path to employment. 
So some of our popular transition age services or services for youth with disabilities, um, we do offer career exploration. And so a 14 year old or a 15 year old or even a 16 year old, anyone in high school that comes to us, they might not know what they wanna do. They might think that working at Marshalls is really awesome or they wanna work at Walmart, but what exactly do they wanna do? We can kind of help them explore and figure out um, what it is that they like about jobs that maybe they've heard of or maybe a job that mom or dad has um, and kind of help them to narrow down jobs that they might actually like to do. We have pre-employment transition services. Um, and so sometimes that's needed throughout the case. We have introduction to self-advocacy, um, which is only a four hour service, but a lot of our individuals uh, really benefit from that because they don't necessarily know as they're transitioning out of high school, how to advocate for themselves because they've had individuals there helping them along the way while they've been in school. Um, so we want to ensure that they, you know, can advocate for themselves upon graduation. We offer some types, uh, some different types of paid work experiences. Um, one of those most popular services um, occurs over the summer. We call it uh, summer youth work experience where an individual gets up to five weeks of real world work experience in the community. We have a list of um, employers that offer these types of things to our individuals. We have job coaches there available for our students. Again, this is most likely um, going to be one of the first paid work experiences or work experiences that any of our students have ever had. And we do um, compensate them at minimum wage. So that's a good incentive. Um, we also offer job development. So someone meeting with someone on a weekly basis um, to look for and prepare, look for jobs and prepare for interviews, ultimately help them to obtain jobs. Um, we do offer job coaching as well to help someone um, maintain that, that employment that they do, they do get. Um, so moving along to closure, as I stated, we do offer job coaching if that's needed for an individual once they obtain a job. Our goal is to have someone, an individual, adult or student, maintain their employment for a period of 90 days independently. And so after job coaching has faded, maybe after two weeks, after four weeks, they are maintaining their work. They're able to do everything that they can at work. We would talk about closing their case. Again, if there are other entities involved, we would uh, partner with them um, and talk about what closure looks like to offer some type of seamless transition. Um, just to make sure that the individual is supported, of course, when we do close the case. Um, certainly, if an individual has not made progress um, throughout you know, a couple of months of their case, or perhaps they're terminated from work, we might talk about case closure, um, but it wouldn't necessarily go to case closure um, at every, every turn. So um, if they're not making progress, our counselors will you know, talk with other entities that are involved as well as the student to say, hey, what's going on? Um, we want to offer support to our students. Um, the web page uh, I indicated earlier, ood.ohio.gov, um, you see various tabs here. Um, what is OOD? You can learn a bit more about what our agency offers and what we can do. Um, there's a tab for individuals with disabilities, information on providers that we use for various services, information for employers that we do work with, and then our policies are also indicated there. Um, but if you do click on the Individuals with Disabilities tab, which is the second tab in on our website, you can navigate to a, our Students 14 Plus web page, and that's where, where you'll find a ton of information about um, our transition services. You can also follow us on social media at ood.ohio. Ohio, OOD, I'm sorry. Um, and you can learn about you know, what's going on and kind of the current news here at OOD. Um, there is one last slide and I'm not quite sure why it's not going to, oh, there you go. Um, so here's my contact information. Um, as I stated, Natalie Myers, Vocational Rehabilitation Supervisor. Uh, my phone number is listed there. We are currently working remotely. So we are all working out of our homes in my nice home office here and my co-worker over there. I don't know if you can see my cat lying on the bed, but um, <laughs> we are working remotely. We don't have a date to go back to the office. Um, and so all of our counselors are doing either Zoom or Google meetings with individuals and students that they work with. Um, we do use Microsoft Teams as our primary platform um, to talk with individuals. Um, you know, we can send mail if needed, but 
everything is done remotely at this point in time. Natalie, thank you so much for your presentation. Um, <clears throat> we're almost at the top of the hour, 